So I met my wife, my, my, I, met, I met another woman, and uh, she had a small child. And as I looked at her, I was like, okay, let me try this out. But she was good to her children. She was good to her child. And I was like, I can't, I can't believe there's women out here that actually take care of their children. I'm, like, like I'm from a background where nobody takes care of their children. Back in the, like in the hood, like in, 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 the, in, in the poverty part area, like a lot of the family, the family members are on drugs, they're, they're drunk all the time. They're not taking care of their children. Go out there and make your, make, you know, go make friends and live life and, you know, hopefully that you, you come back at night. But yeah, I met this, this new woman. And I, I saw her taking care of a child, and I was like, no, nah, I want that. I want that woman. And I, I asked her, I said, you know what, it's been six months, and you're actually doing things I don't see women do, like, you know, actually taking care of their child and loving their child and cleaning the house and doing stuff like that, right? So is, is this just a trick for, to, you know, like, a, is this just a trick that I'm, you're just, you know, doing good till, you know, after you get tired and, you know, just backslide and, you know, not take care of your family. We ended up having children. We had three children. And then we got married. So we got married, we had three more children. And, uh, but I brought that pain I had growing up and I brought all that pain of, uh, with the gang life and uh, hurting other people and getting hurt and, and uh, getting attacked. And um, things didn't work out right in our marriage because we, I had issues that I couldn't talk about. So I brought it into my, to my marriage and, we let, and I was drinking and partying all the time, getting drunk and, and you know, I did some dumb things and you know, I strayed in a relationship and, you know, I cheated on my wife and, you know, things didn't work out. It was, it was a horrible thing I did. But in my own mind, I figured, you know, that she's probably doing the same thing. So I gave myself the, you know, I give myself, like, whatever, they're doing it, I'm gonna do it. But even though she wasn't, I, you know, I did it. But, you know, I left. Got found out. I left the home. God spoke to me because He put me in a place with this woman that was a Christian for 36 years. But she drinks. She gets high. She smokes. She throws fits of rage. She 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 beats up her kid. I stayed there for a week, and I was like. You call yourself a Christian? You're a Christian? He goes, well, I got a personal relationship with Jesus. I said, I got a lot of issues and I'm working on them and God saved me. I'm with God. I believe in God. So I said, yeah, who's this God? I said, how do you, how do you accept him? So she told me how to do it. The following day, I left and I... I was thinking about this. I've been here before. I've been here before. I've been here before. It's not my fault. Well, yeah, it is my fault. But the first time it wasn't my fault. But I brought it into my new marriage and now it is my fault. And I'm, and I'm like, well, God, I need to know you. I need to know who you are. So that day I was gonna go out and go meet somebody else. And as I was going there, I seen our vehicle. We just got a brand new vehicle. There was a car crash in, on, on Main Street. And the car that was resembled ours was flipped upside down on top of another car. And I was like, oh my God, that's my wife's car. And I was like, what, what, what? But it, I found out it wasn't. But I had this shadow following me around. And I was like really depressed and really hurting. And I was like, God, God, what am I going to do? I was like, what am I going to do, man? Another failed marriage. I went to the place where I was at to go meet this person. And they were there and, you know, they wanted to get with me. And I was like, 
there, there's no booze there. It was dry. They, they didn't, you know. So thank God that there wasn't any booze there. I didn't get drunk. I didn't drink. So I didn't go through with screwing around. I, uh, I left. And as I was going home, I felt the presence of the Lord behind me, like following me around. I felt this, this something on my shoulder. But as I walked out of that building, I felt happy. I felt relieved, and, and I got out of that that air that that room with that with that woman. She was like, "Come on, get with me, get with me. What do you think she's doing? She's probably doing the same thing right now. Come on, come on, come on." And I'm like, "No." I said, "Maybe I'll get back to you later on down the road, but no, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make things right." I went back to a place I was staying at. And then that night, I, I found out how to do the sinner's prayer. And it was dark in that room. I was in the living room sleeping at my friend's mother's place. This is that lady that's, you know, 36 years walking with God, and, you know, acting the way she acts. But she really did have the spirit of, of the Lord in her. Even though she is the way she is, you know, you know God's still covered. She's still covered with the blood. And, but I didn't know all these things as I know now. I just jumped in by faith. And I went down on my knees and I was lying on, on a couch like that. And I had my head down like that. And I, and I said, Lord Jesus. And I said this prayer. And I was like, Jesus, come into my heart, my mind, my soul, Lord. I want to be your follower. I want to follow you every day of my life. Give me your Holy Spirit, Lord. I turn from my wicked ways and I follow you from this day forward. I love you, Lord. I love you. No matter what's going on in life, I know you're going to make things better. I know that only you, through you, everything could be made right and perfect. Beside, without you, Lord, my life is falling apart and is torn to pieces. And I don't know where I am. I don't know what to do. And I need your help. Right then and there, I felt that spirit drop into me like a 10 bricks map. Boom! All of a sudden, I was like, whoa! I felt different. All of a sudden, the, the dark room got bright. And it got, it lit up. And I was like, whoa, I felt this peace. And this, this oh my God, yeah. That following morning, I had, I had, like, oh, I had a bag full of gold in the cell. It was gone. Boom, right there. All of a sudden, I had all this money. And it was my son's birthday, my, my, my eldest son. And I, uh, I showed up there. I had gifts, I had balloons, uh, you know, and then I walked in there, I had cigarettes. I guess it was a uh, party night before. This was, you know, really nice. And so I went in there and I, I was just, I felt like, like the life of a party. Like it was so dead in there. When you got in there, it was dead. Like people were like, so like, really, you know, you know something bad was happening. But I went in there and I became the life of the party. Because I was giving out cigarettes, give out presents, wish the kid happy birthday. And then I said, see ya. I turned around and walked out the door. As soon as I did that, darkness fell back in. Because the light of God was in me. And I walked in there. As I walked in there, I brought joy because of the gifts and I showed up. As I did that, the Lord told me, leave now, leave. And then when I did that, the lady that I was staying with was there at the party, at the birthday party. She said, as soon as you left, man, that place got dark. When you walked in there, it was so light. Everybody was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you left, without even saying bye, you just turned around and walked out the door. I was gone. And then, uh, she told me, you need to talk to your wife. And I said, well, I gave my life to Jesus. And today, I'm a new creation. And I talked to my wife on the phone. And I said, well, we have to, we have to speak. This was uh, going on the seventh day. It was six days I was gone. On the seventh day, I returned back home. But when I returned back home, I had Jesus in my heart, in my mind, in my soul. I was a new creation, everything's different. I said, you know what? I'm not drinking no more. 
I'm, I'm going to change my ways, I'm going to live right and do things right. And you know, my wife, you know, she was there talking and we talked and talked about this. And 